Hello everyone, I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. Welcome to Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report. Today I'm gonna to cover intervertebral disc degeneration. Oftentimes you may just hear the term disc degeneration. This is a painful and performance limiting condition with a high prevalence. Intervertebral disc degeneration is a common condition with prevalence estimates between 50 and 64 percent for ages 65 and up. It is a painful condition that limits motion and activity. Intervertebral disc degeneration is a main contributor to neck and back pain. The disc degenerative process is characterized by loss of water. It results in disc space narrowing. Disc degeneration is not exclusive to the older population. A degenerative disc can be found among young healthy discs in a young individual. The intervertebral disc is often abbreviated to IVD. It is located between the vertebral bodies. Its function is to provide a measure of shock absorbing protection to the spinal column and appropriate stability for the spine during load bearing activities. It has three components, the nucleus propulsus, the annulus fibrosus, and the vertebral end plates. The nucleus propulsus, often abbreviated to NP, is the innermost component. It is avascular. It is comprised largely of water and also contains cartilage cells and collagen fibers. It is gel-like and has the consistency of toothpaste. It contains protoglycans, which attract water to support the disc structural integrity. The annulus fibrosus fibers are arranged in alternately oriented concentric ring layers, which contribute to the tensile strength of the annular ring. Disclaimer alert. Watching this video does not take the place of seeing a medical professional. If you think you have disc degeneration or if you have been diagnosed with disc degeneration, please see a medical professional. Again, watching this video does not take the place of seeing a medical professional. Seeing a medical professional will help you get an evaluation, diagnosis, and treatment plan. If you start to perform exercise, please start at your current health, fitness, and strength levels and always work through a symptom-free range of motion. Never perform an exercise that elicits or intensifies symptoms and always increase the intensity of your exercise in small, gradual, calculated increments. And again, please remember, viewing this video does not take the place of seeing a medical professional. Please see a medical professional. There are a multitude of contributing factors to intervertebral disc degeneration. Disc degeneration may be caused by genetic disposition, injury, aging, and environmental factors such as smoking, obesity, and mechanical overuse, or any combination of these factors. Also, there are intrinsic contributing factors to the development of intervertebral disc degeneration. These include osteoporosis, osteopenia, and compression fractures. End plate thinning and fracture, changes in vertebral body end plate sclerosis, and facet cartilage erosion. Aging and laxity of spinal ligaments and atrophy of spinal muscles can also contribute to the development of intervertebral disc degeneration. There are two types of intervertebral disc degeneration. They are end plate driven and annulus driven. End plate driven involves end plate defects and inward collapse of the annulus fibrosis. This mostly occurs in the upper lumbar spine and thoracic spine. Often starts to develop before the age of 30, usually leads to moderate back pain, and is associated with compression fractures. Annulus driven involves a radial fissure or a disc prolapse, mostly affects the lower lumbar spine, develops progressively after the age of 30, usually leads to severe back pain and sciatica, and is associated with repetitive bending and lifting. So there are two types of intervertebral disc degeneration. 
There's end plate driven and annulus driven. When you see a medical professional and the medical professional thinks that you have intervertebral disc degeneration, most likely x-rays will be ordered. On the x-rays, what will most likely be seen will be osteophytes in the spine, end plate sclerosis, and disc space narrowing. Preserving healthy joints, particularly in the spine, in the intervertebral disc is vital for maintaining mobility throughout life, especially for seniors. Prevention of intervertebral disc degeneration is essential. As a doctor of chiropractic, I have treated numerous patients with intervertebral disc degeneration. The primary treatment that a doctor of chiropractic delivers is what is called a chiropractic adjustment. The chiropractic adjustment helps to reestablish proper skeletal motion and helps to optimize nerve flow. Prevention exercises and rehabilitation exercises for an intervertebral disc degeneration should include motion exercises. These should be exercises that you perform in a slow and controlled manner through a symptom-free range of motion. Remember how I described in the disclaimer that you never want to perform an exercise that elicits or intensifies symptoms, and you always want to exercise through a symptom-free range of motion. So you can perform motion exercises in all planes through a symptom-free range of motion. This is going to help to bring blood flow not only to the intervertebral disc, but to the structures around it. It will help to strengthen those areas and make those areas healthier. You can perform swimming and pool exercises. The buoyancy of the water helps to combat gravity. Performing pool and swimming exercises often helps those with intervertebral disc degeneration to stay healthy and to build strength. Other exercises that can be performed are fitball exercises. Now, these exercises should only be done if someone's balance is good. If you do not have good balance, please do not use a fitball. But the fitball is a tool that will help you to build strength and to stretch. Again, only use the fitball if you have good balance. You want to perform spine stretching exercises and spinal decompression exercises. You can perform pull-up bar hanging traction. That is going to help to decompress the spine. Postural correction exercises can also be helpful. Always perform these exercises through a symptom-free range of motion, but these exercises will help to strengthen the surrounding tissues. You also want to look at strengthening the deep core muscles and the deep spinal muscles. To strengthen the deep core muscles and the deep spinal muscles, you can perform the abdominal drawing in maneuver and abdominal hollowing, which is also known as stomach vacuums. Nutrition is vital in all types of injuries and in health in general. So when you think about nutrition for the intervertebral disc degeneration, first of all, hydration. Please stay hydrated. Drink the appropriate amount of water per day that is needed. And if you think you need more, go ahead and drink more. You always want to eat anti-inflammatory foods and you always want to stay away from foods that promote inflammation. Thank you everybody for watching today's episode of Dr. Ozella Sports Medicine Report where I covered intervertebral disc degeneration. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. You can visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can find additional information on the book and you can also find my blog. My blog contains articles on spine health, chiropractic care, sports medicine, health, fitness, exercise, and nutrition. Again, my website is championshipchiropractic.com. Please feel free to like this video. If you have questions, feedback, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Please subscribe to my YouTube page and always remember to train hard, but train smart. Get adequate rest between your training sessions and to utilize nutritional and supplementation strategies that work for you.